Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas if you're celebrating back here. I've never been one to really rush Christmas out, so I'm gonna probably have my decor back there for a little while. And I'll probably begin referring to it as winter decorations, but no, as I shoot this, this is the day after Christmas and I still very much feel in the thick of it. But I hope you've been doing well. I hope you've had some time to slow down in um, these last few days and really appreciate. Today, something I'm appreciating is uh, some of the stuff I got for Christmas. I actually um, had recently, shortly before Christmas, I think it was during the Emily Awards, I placed a Laura Geller order. Um, Laura Geller, by the way, they ran away with a lot of categories during the Emily Awards. Categories like powder bronzer and powder blush and the shadow sticks. The brand's just loaded with great quality stuff and they've often got great deals. And when I placed this order, I got some incredible deals on some of this stuff. And by the time it came, I was like, oh, it's getting close to Christmas. I'll just put this under the tree as a gift for myself. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I do have some other beauty um, gifts and I'll work those into another video coming up, but this is going to be really Laura Geller focused. I do have a base product from Laura Geller here that I can use um, that was not part of this haul, but I have her Better Than Bare Tinted Moisturizer with the SPF 55 in it. I wear the shade Beige 200 here, so just kind of a basic little light coverage product. So I thought I could go ahead and put that on before I get into some of the other things, but the deals were crazy. I got like a huge eyeshadow palette thing for less than $20, $15 for a corrector. There's a little eyeshadow quad I got for under $10 and for Laura Geller quality, like it's just amazing. So I already had all my skincare on and I'm just taking this and buffing out my tinted moisturizer. I feel a little nasal this morning, but I'm not too bad off. I let out some really big sneezes when I woke up and I felt like it loosened some of my congestion. But as you can see, this is giving a lot of extra hydration to the skin. You can see that glow. And yeah, this is just gonna be me trying out some of these new things that I got. And I'm super excited about a certain face palette I found too. So there we go, a little light evening out on the skin, a little extra moisture. And then I got this Laura Geller Cancel and Conceal Skin Perfector. So it's a little corrector in the shade Porcelain Fair. So this is what this looks like. And I'm very eager to test it out. I was playing around with it yesterday, just like putting my finger in it, feeling Feeling that nice creamy consistency. Um, it definitely is a little like more pronounced peach tone than um, what we're using from the Becca and Smashbox line in that fair shade. And then also Elf's, which is exactly like that. It's a little bit more light and pinky. This is looking a little bit more rich and peachy, uh, maybe less in terms of brightening, but more just straight up color correcting kind of reminding me a bit more of a Bobbi Brown bisque, and the texture is definitely feeling that way too. I'm just kind of using my finger because I want to understand what this feels like. Sometimes brushes rob you of that a little bit, but I'm just pressing it in, letting that melt into the skin, and I do feel like it's doing some color correcting. Then I'll just go in with the Sephora 57 brush and really get to that inner corner. Sometimes I feel like when I blend with my finger, I pick up a little product, you know, and I'm not really wanting to take away. I'm just wanting to blend it in. Seems really good, actually. I was thinking I could just layer in a regular concealer because I got some areas around my nose that I also want to conceal and I could just add a little bit in the under eye and everything will be smoothed out and nice. I did have a regular skin tone concealer from Laura Geller but I think the tone must have been a little off because I did declutter that. But I have my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop here. This is in the shade Vanilla and I'm going to give myself a little dot right in here, a little bit out here. We have been playing so many board games. This has been the Christmas of games here. We've been playing a lot of Trouble. Trouble is so fun. Belle is so into it. Her and I, if given the time, we can play that for a long time. That's the one with the bubble in the middle, the pop matic bubble. Yeah, I remember playing that with my brother and sister so much. I would love for everyone in my family to be able to get together and we could just have a big old tournament with that. See, I, I have so many memories of just playing board games with my family. We got Battleship 
which is very fun. Generally speaking, we love Guess Who. We haven't played that a ton these last few days. We got Mancala, Mancala. I remember playing that as a kid as well, but I didn't have it here, so we bought that. The girls got that as a gift, and that's really fun. And then someone gave us, um, I think it's called Monopoly Deal. Is that what it's called? It's like a card deck game of Monopoly, and that was fun too. Biddy was totally over it, though. She just wanted to play with her Barbies. Anyway, just blended in a little skin tone concealer there in my regular zone. These next couple things, these are not new. I'm going to take my Baked Blurring and Setting Powder in Porcelain Fair from Laura Geller. I need to use this more. Or I think I kind of forgot about this. I'm going to pick it up on my Triangle Powder Puff at first here. I feel like by swatching it, like a lot wants to come off on my fingers, so I don't want to go too heavy with it. It's not adding a ton of brightness, but it is setting. I want to use a little bit of that just with a brush. I think I like the way the brush picks this up a bit better than the powder puff, actually. Okay, T-zone with that. And then I'm just going to go all over the rest of my face with my Laura Geller Baked Balance in Brighton. And I wear the shade Medium here. So this is where it's all swirled. And you could wear this like powder foundation. Um, she has something called Double Take Baked Powder Foundation that's more of a full coverage. And this is kind of like a medium coverage. But I'm not getting a whole lot on my brush. I'm just getting enough so that I can run around the face and kind of set everything everywhere where I didn't use the other powder. We can see a little added coverage. It pairs nicely with that light tinted moisturizer and it evens it all out like that. Now we're going to move on to the new face palette I got. I'm so excited about this because I don't have any of Laura Geller's like baked face palettes and she's really come out with some different configurations that have both eyeshadows and face colors and different things but with some of them it was like there were enough shades inside that I already had that I couldn't justify getting the palette and then this one had been marked down to $26 and I'll show you what the front looks like. Pretty packaging here. It's kind of thick because we do have baked products inside, but it's called Cheek to Cheek Tropical Glow Face Palette. Two blushes, two highlighters, and two bronzers. So it's kind of like Laura Geller's doing her own little hourglass thing here. But look at these tones. I love it so much. So the thing in here that I was familiar with, there's a blush in Tropic Hues. And this is a beautiful shade. It's got like swirls of coral and rose. And I swear there's like a little bit of lilac swirled in there too. Too. So interesting, and I had that within something else of Laura Geller's, but not freestanding, so I thought I I'll take more of that. I love that shade. There's the Tahitian Glow Bronzer, which that, I had something called Tahitian Glow Body Frosting, but it was definitely, I think, a lot more shimmery than that. It's got that bronzer. It's got the Honey Dipped Bronzer, which I was not familiar with. Honey Suckle Blush, which once upon a time, I think I had that in a mini. Dolce de Leche um, Highlighter, which is very shimmery, and another French Vanilla Highlighter, which I know and love, and I do own that, but that's very, very subtle, and it's super Super useful. I feel like these might be a little bit deeper than my standard um, Bronze and Brighton that I wear. Another thing to know about these pans of product, they are domed and baked. You can see that they're domed here. You will have these for a long time. I, When I first started using Laura Geller stuff, I remember being back in my apartment and I had gotten this little Laura Geller gift set and I think it might have been four or five little baked products that were individual and they were about that size, maybe even smaller. Smaller. And it was the Balance and Brighton, the Bronze and Brighton, and I think a few blushes. And I had those things for so long. I did hit pan on those products, but it took me, I want to say, well over a couple years to do it, okay? Like, you have a lot of product here. You do not go through it quickly. Um, and that was with some pretty consistent use, too. I'm not saying, like, oh, I just used it infrequently and it took me a while to use it up. But, like, I use that stuff often. So just know that even though these might not look super big, it really is product that's going to last you a while. So I'm going to first take some of this Tahitian glue up here. It looks a little lighter. It doesn't look extremely shimmery. And I'm just gonna take this around the hairline and we'll see what we get. I'm not getting a lot of shimmer, but I can see there's a decent amount swirled in that looks not necessarily sparkly, but maybe a little bit pearly. Okay. Soft and easy, I'd call this one. You know, it feels like when I go into different bronzers in an hourglass palette. Most of the time those feel kind of soft and easy, hard to mess up. I can get a little soft contour out of it, but it's nothing huge. 
tone feels like that of a standard bronzer to me. Um, it's not too warm, not too cool. I'm kind of letting it go in my cheekbone area and a little bit on top of it. We can go down here as well. As we always say after the holidays, bye bye corn casserole, bye bye mashed potatoes. Okay, contour under there. And then we have this honey dip shade, which as I was swatching that out and playing with that yesterday, it seems to have more shimmer and more depth. So I'm adding that in and I can really see it. Ooh, I got a lot on my brush at time. Do you see that though? Glowy depth. I see why they call this tropical glow. Did she have a rainy Christmas in Southern Illinois or did she have Christmas in some tropical location. No offense to people who travel to the tropics during the holidays. I think everybody should do what they want to do. And I understand for most people, like that's the time you can get away when kids are on a Christmas break or whatever. But I will always be that person who is craving cold and snow at Christmas time. I can't picture myself somewhere on a beach for Christmas. Okay, I'm adding that to the contour zone because it does have depth. Even though it's got a little sheen, it's not too much for me. Some hair is trying to make its way out of the makeup headband due to vigorous blending. Okay, that's pretty. I probably put on a little more than was necessary up here around the hairline, but it's fine. <laughs> Couple of blushes here. But Laura Geller blushes can do no wrong, okay? I'm gonna first put on Honeysuckle because that one looks, I mean, it practically looks like a bronzer. It's swirled with a little soft peachy pink, but it definitely is a blush, and I'm gonna put that on for you and show you what that looks like, okay? Can you see the little bit of rosiness that it does indeed have? And then we can pop some Tropic Hues on it. Okay, this is gonna bug me. Hair gone. I say it often with a cheek palette, but I'm seeing eyeshadow. These could all turn into an eyeshadow look. Okay, so there's a little bit of honeysuckle. Think very soft, kind of neutral blush. You are getting some glow out of it. Now we must move on to Tropic Hues. So beautiful. I'm so excited to have this in here. Okay, let's see. We'll take a little bit more apple of the cheek. Hello Glow. Oh, look at that. The pretty thing about these shimmery blushes is, you know, they can give your face actually a little more dimension and definition because when they're not hitting the light, they look deeper. Ooh, I need to blend over here. Laura Geller blushes make me happy. Stunning. Lovely. Then I think we're going to put on some baked French vanilla over here. So this is your barely there highlighter. This is more of a brightener. I'm going to pop it right here and you can see how, does it have a little sheen? Yeah, but it's very minimal. And if you look up close on my skin, like that is so nice. It's such a special product. I've loved it for years. I think I did a devoted review to this very early on when I had my Beauty Broadcast Express channel. By the way, all those reviews can still be accessed, you know? Taking it up here too, like this is that highlight. You feel like you can put it all over your face and it doesn't attract any attention in a bad way, you know, to lines or anything. It's just really soft and pretty. I'm gonna kind of go over this zone where I feel like I got heavy handed with the bronzer and use it almost in a corrective, softening way. And then I'm gonna kind of clean off my brush a bit and Dolce de Leche is very shimmery. This is my first uh, go around with this kind of a highlighter and it looks darker in tone. Like it looks like it's swirled with a little bit of deeper peach and bronze perhaps, but it's highly shimmery. That's a small bit. It's very shimmery. I love that they paid attention to that in this palette. Like, let's give one highlight that's muted and one that goes like this. So much fun. It's going to be really fun to combine those, and I can take a little bit of that shimmer, and I can hit the cupid's bow, and you're really going to see it. Yes, I love it. One thing you're gonna notice is after you've been using all these baked products, like you're a little bit dusty in here. It really doesn't matter. It's nothing a little Kleenex wiped in there couldn't solve if that bugged you. And then I wonder about this again, this powder that was called Baking and Setting, because I feel pretty shimmery. I'm just wondering what the effect might be if I took a little bit of this. And by the way, this is not my foundation brush. This is uh, from Profusion, but it's called the Round Tapered Powder Brush. It's just good for a little lightweight targeted powder. 
I'm wondering what little dab of this stuff. Just setting. This is the definition of taking it down a notch. I'm not putting on a heavy enough amount to really drastically alter things, but I feel like I've softened it somewhat. So I'm gonna go on and do my brows and I'll come back with the eye palette. Brows are done, eyeshadow primer is on, and this is the eyeshadow palette I got. I just thought the color tones in this one looked so good. It's called the Ultimate Palette. And keep in mind, it was this. It was an entire four piece eye brush set for $17, like what? The tones in here looked so fun. I really liked that it was a lot of basic neutrals, but then some of those pretty like jeweled looking pops seemed so fun. And all the rows say something different. So these say base, these say inner corner, these say lid, um, or those look like great transition-y kinds of shades, shimmer topper, crease, um, outer corner. Everything in this row has some shimmer, like a deep, kind of shimmer and then the line down here and as I was swatching some of them I thought hmm some seem a bit firm you know I'm not sure so I got that and then for nine dollars I got um, one of her little baked eyeshadow quads I think these are pretty new and I got the shade pink buttercream the main reason why I got this number one I thought it really looked like kind of a Chanel type thing and it's two like pearly shimmers and two seemingly mattes down there but I love the story behind it because pink buttercream cream is one of her iconic baked blushes and the little description on the box says do these colors look familiar they're inspired by the multi-dimensional swirls in my favorite baked blush and brighten shades so I thought how cool is that there's a nice little compact with a mirror and maybe on another day that I'm using that blush I can pair it with this eyeshadow palette but I love that the blushes are so iconic that they set the tone you know so many times something comes out in a collection or whatever and maybe there's a pairing blush that comes in to just sort of support things the blush is the star the eyeshadow palette comes out in response I like that but the brushes I got I was just playing around with these a little bit yesterday I've got this one that reminds me a lot of my profusion crease brush um, it's a little pinched in at the ferrule it's not super full this one called crease brush is a really nice size again not oversized but could be nice for blending out the edges it is round right here I have a liner brush and then I have this big daddy here large blending brush which honestly is about the size of my Sephora concealer brush. It's big. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure about that with my eyes, but then as a free gift with this order, I got this brush and it's a blending crease brush. Let's see it in comparison to the one that says crease brush. It's a little smaller. It's larger than my um, Profusion small pointed brush, but smaller than anything else I've shown you brush wise here besides the angled one. That's actually, I think, going to be good in the outer corner. So again, there's nothing really flat. I wouldn't have minded if this brush was replaced with something actually flat that could pack shadow on the lid, but it's cool. I wasn't really relying on this brush set to take care of me for all brush needs. I just thought, wow, I can try some Laura Geller brushes and this is a super affordable deal. Let's start out with this shade right here in the crease. We're going to go to the crease right and there's this kind of like medium neutral brown right in there. Let's try it out. I've had some experiences with baked shadows and I think I'm thinking back like years and years like being in the other house trying some baked shadows I didn't really love but I also have another palette kind of like this that is overall more brownish tones and that was good for me. One thing to note is that the front of it it's like a little box of chocolates. This is not firm plastic. I don't think your shadows are in danger because it, it's firm, but it's not like solid. I wouldn't like put a ton of things on top of this storage wise. But yeah, that shade is being kind of what you see is what you get. And I'm again just using that little crease brush. That's what it's called. And to me, like it doesn't feel like Christmas unless there's some kind of palette involved. That's just my feeling. <laughs> Like when I saw that this order came and I'd actually kind of forgotten about it. I was like, oh yeah, there's that palette in there. I'm going to count this as a Christmas gift and open it on Christmas. The fact that there was a palette here, that made it feel gifty to me. Um, I'm going to go up to this lid row and maybe grab some of these outer shades here. This looks a little bit peachy, a little bit mid-tone. And just take that on the outside. I now want to see my older palette. Yeah, this was a pretty one called Nothing But Neutral. Same packaging. Okay, so this is the kind of palette. There's so many shades. You feel like you could do some artist type of just bouncing around 
blending your colors. These feel kind of close up here and rosy. I'm using between them. I mean, one's a little warmer, one's a little cooler, but just the texture of the shadows, your brush is not getting super overwhelmed by them. It's not picking up a lot of these at once, but you can see they're translating on the eyes. They are doing the job. Then I'm thinking about taking this one that's more like my Profusion Crease Brush, picking up a little highlight. This base shade up here looks almost like baked French vanilla. Grab a little Use it on the edge as a little smoothing step. Yeah, that's nice. Fully opaque, just using it lightly. I'm not really sure what direction I'm going with this look today, but I want to take in some darkness. I'm going to go to this shade right here in this row. It looks like a brownish plum, and it actually seems like it has a little satin finish. And I'm just taking my Morphe flat brush. We've deviated from the set, and I'm going to pat that on my outer lid. Pretty. Then there's a really like purpley shimmer at the end of that row. What if we add a little bit of that on too? Let's just kind of like layer it in. I don't think it's going to be super intense. I'm just throwing a little bit of that on top. It is making the whole thing look more purple now. There's a shade kind of catty corner from that that looks really interesting. It's called a shimmer topper. I'm not sure that I'll use this today but it's a really cool shifty green to rosy taupe. We've seen some brands put out shades like that. They're really cool. I'm gonna take that smaller brush and um, just work out my crease, my outer corner here, because we've applied some things. I feel like my overall takeaway thus far, I'm going into this rosy shade, by the way, right there. Um, just as I blend. So if you're sitting there watching this and you're thinking, do the eyeshadows get you ex as excited as the face products from Laura Geller? Like, is this something we absolutely have to try? I still think the face stuff reigns supreme for me. These bake palettes, I would say I have fun trying them, but they're not like her strongest and best item. But look, Oh, I am loving how diffused this look is becoming. Um, this shade has been great for that. This kind of berry right in here. Yes. She does some excellent press shadows too. It's not like there's anything really wrong with them. I guess I'm just saying the thing that makes me go wow is definitely some of the face stuff. I've got to get into this shimmer topper row right here. We've got to see what's happening. I'm looking at you right in the middle. I'm gonna take a smaller flat brush. I'm going to that rosy one that's just really catching the light. Yeah, she's pretty. She's giving me sheen. It's not like wildly metallic, but it's definitely laying down, you know? Okay, see that? Nice little sheen. And then we can go to this one right here, because this also looks really pretty. Ooh, yeah. She's bright. Inner corner with that. Ooh, we also have an entire row of things called inner corner up here, I should note. The nice thing about Laura Geller is I think that with the prices she has on her website, with the frequent deals, you feel totally wide open to trying things, trying new products, because the prices just end up being so good. I'm wondering what will happen if I take a little bit of this black, which is labeled as line, I'm wondering how intense that is. Okay, I can see it going on. We just want to know the full extent. Very easy and approachable. And I think if you did a look where you paired that purpley shade with this, it would look really, really nice. Like did it more on purpose, like with your finger. Layering in on that darkness, that's pretty. There's my look so far. I'm gonna dust away just a smidgen of fallout that I see there. Not too bad though. This is not from this haul, but this um, Laura Geller Kajal Longwear Liner in the soft black shade. Take that on my upper lash line. I love these jumbo pencils. They could be shadow sticks, but they're like the easiest longwear liners. They last all day. And some of the other shades are really pretty down on the lower lash line too. In fact, I think I'll grab something else for that. I've got this one called Smoky Plum. It's lighter than the one called Amethyst. And I'm just gonna take that all along here. Oh, it's a terrific smoky lower lash line. And it just immediately looks smudged, but it's gonna set. It will outlast shadow just unbelievably so. I can't believe I turn 40 tomorrow. 
Like, what? When did that happen? I'm cool with it. I don't feel like I'm 40, but that's fine. Grateful to be here. That wraps up my new stuff from Laura Geller. I'm gonna finish off my look and I'll be right back. Okay, friends, we've added in mascara. Um, I have been playing with this Essence Volume Booster Lash Primer just about every day, just pairing it with different mascaras. Today I used it with one that I really didn't love at first on its own. It's from Estee Lauder and it's called the Turbo Lash. And I wasn't huge on this, but I wore this pairing yesterday and I actually, sorry, I feel like I'm crooked here. I wore these together yesterday and I thought they held the curl really well so I'm going for it again today just to see if we can get that two days in a row. For lips I don't have anything new um, so I'm gonna go to something older that I have on hand. This is the Laura Geller Smart Pout Transfer Proof Lipstick. I have it in the color called Brilliant and it just looks like this soft kind of rosy color. A little bit of a pinky nude put that on and then I know it will have better staying power if I just wear it as is but I want to put some gloss on top and I have this treat and go lip oil this is in the shade runner up looking like classic dusty rose but that's kind of what I'm going for today with this look and this stuff is really really thin super moisturizing for your lips but whereas a lot of the lip oils still feel like kind of a jelly gloss tacky texture. This is free of all tackiness, but it does moisturize the lips really well. So I think that looks nice. That is my look today, my loves. We're playing with the new Lori Geller makeup, and I would say we ran into some really, really good deals. No matter how you slice it, I think $17 for this ginormous eyeshadow palette plus brushes. I think that was an awesome deal. I'm excited to do some more looks with this. I think it's an overall cooler color scheme, although we do have a little bit of copper. We had a splash there, but it's a little bit on the cooler side. I really enjoyed my color corrector. I see it very much more so as a color corrector less of just a brightener so I like that and I love this face palette this was a huge win for me and I'm excited to use the little eyeshadow quad so thank you all for watching I hope you're having a great day and I will see you again very soon I love you bye